everybody. So today we're going to be talking about does AI negate the need for a taxonomy? Now, AI has existed for quite some time. So when I got this question in, and thank you, Chuck, for suggesting this as a topic for a video, I, I took this through the lens of the LLM AI that is so top of mind right now. And I would also assume since AI can be used in the assignment and creation of taxonomy as well, that we're going to go through this from a specific lens of is taxonomy needed still for the search discovery of content and information, because that is a primary use of taxonomy. And maybe the AI can do that, right? Like AI can go and find that content for you in a much easier way uh, than a taxonomy could. Here's the thing. Taxonomy is actually even more important now than it ever was before. The same can be said for Knowledge Graph. I think there's a lot of press right now on why Knowledge Graph is so integral to the success of an LLM. But behind that is even the taxonomy, because when you are training LLM, you have to have training sets, right? It's not the laborious uh, same process that you would for other types of uh, machine learning or AI but you still need to know what is in these massive amounts of data that you're feeding into your LLM. And that's for two reasons. One, there's hallucinations, right? So that's where you maybe don't have enough coverage or maybe you have a lot of conflicting coverage in whatever data your LLM was trained on. In that case, you need to know where those gaps are. You need to understand what does it know? What is it confused about? In order to know the stuff, and what it is that went into your model for your LLM, taxonomy is kind of helpful for that. <laughs> so a taxonomy is really helpful to understand the breadth, the depth, and even um, the agreement of the information that your LLM is learning from. This even helps on the other side of the model where maybe you're trying to do root cause analysis and maybe there are certain uh, behaviors you're getting from your LLM, whether they're, you know, incorrect behaviors or things that are disruptive or harmful or, you know, something that's undesirable, being able to go back and look at it from a categorization perspective is really helpful. That's where taxonomies are also really in need when you're dealing with LLMs. The other thing is, LLMs are really good at generalizing things because they're trained on a lot of big open web data, right? And a lot of them are now starting to get into licensed data and behind paywall kind of data. But even then, um, if it's not data coming from your own organization, you have terminology that you use in your organization. You have certain concepts that maybe are defined differently. Uh, in your organization than what the web or the uh, open world would define. And so with that, taxonomy is really important because you can create your own list of terminology that is unique to you and your users. And if you need the LLM to understand that, those taxonomies and even the content that you're applying it to or the situations, or the behaviors you're applying it to can be used to train your, your LLM, your models, on a more curated to your organization behavior from your LLM for whatever use case you're using it for. Another thing that some folks might not realize is the cost factor involved here. And there's two, two layers to this. So the first is if you're using an LLM in your search um, application, it is much less expensive to use the taxonomy you have and the content that you have it tagged to, to to curate and train um, the LLM, even if it's an off-the-shelf LLM, you can further calibrate it to your use cases. That is less expensive and still aligns with your business and your users better than if you completely scrapped your taxonomy and started to ask the LLM to apply taxonomy uh, that's not yours to your content and your use cases. It can certainly do that. I mean, there's a lot of taxonomies online. It can even derive a taxonomy, right? That's something that LLMs can do. But the problem with that is the downstream applications and even the upstream applications, if you are maybe an aggregator of other information, you now need to recalibrate all of your systems and everything else to understand and use whatever taxonomy the LLM is, is using. Now, you could use the LLM 
to create a taxonomy. And again, make sure that you test that with your users, make sure it makes sense for your, your business. Um, don't forget the human in the loop aspect to this. Um, that's often forgotten in the LLM space, I think right now. Uh, you can certainly use LLMs for that, but using the LLM on its own to then just assign taxonomy tags that are from the open web or from its its own understanding, the LLM's understanding, um, is not a shortcut. And that brings me to the second piece of you know the cost savings uh, hypothesis, which is so so common when anyone is talking about machine learning. And that is machine learning is less expensive than using things manually. Now, do not take this to mean I do not believe in automation. I do. In fact, machine learning is so, so helpful to make things more consistent, to, to cut down on costs from a perspective of, you know, the time you have to do something manually, but do not forget the human in the loop aspect right? Because most of the time people think that machine learning is less expensive because they're thinking of the immediate, oh, I can let people go because I don't need as many people to do this activity anymore. Or I can do more with less, right? Those that believe in this fallacy, is, you have to keep in mind that you still need folks, maybe not as many, but you still need folks to make sure that the model is still being trained and it's still staying in the thresholds that you've determined for precision and recall and and quality and you know making sure that it makes sense for your users all of those metrics you need folks to maintain the models and that's i think where people forget it actually gets more expensive at least in the beginning um, and when i say the beginning i'm saying like first one to two or even three years i mean i've worked on projects exactly like this um, where we were trying to automate more of the taxonomy uh, aspect. And don't get me wrong, again, automation and making it more consistent is great, but you can't then sacrifice and say, all people have to go out the door because you, you need folks that understand the content, understand the tagging structure, understand how those tags interrelate with the, the user and the search engine and you know all of that ecosystem. Um, plus the folks that uh, need to maintain that model, they're not always the same people. And the folks that are maintaining the model are usually machine learning experts, which are be those folks with those skill sets are not as hard to find as they used to be. But if you're looking specifically to machine learning experts that know a lot about LLMs, that space gets much, much, much smaller and they are much, much, much more expensive too. And so um, you have to think of it from that perspective that the model needs to continuously be updated. The model also takes money to run. And so if you're using an LLM, um, if you built your own, you already know there's a lot of costs involved with that because it's a very high compute uh, cost. And if you're using an off the shelf, you know, there's licensing and other things that you probably also already know about. For those that are not using LLMs yet, there's compute costs with any kind of machine learning, not just LLMs. LLMs are just, at least now, pretty expensive to run. So just keep that in mind that sending all of this stuff to the LLM, you may on paper think it's easier and it's cheaper and you, it's, it's like a magic box and it'll do it all for you. But really, um, if you go that route, and again, I've done this many times in my past where I've been on projects and stakeholders are like, great, it's going to decrease our costs, but they don't realize that there's compute costs over and over every single piece of content that goes through that has to get tagged. Um, you can use less expensive models to auto tag your content um, than you would an LLM, at least in today's world. It might get better, it might get cheaper, but that's how it looks today. And so um, that's that's where we are, right? Like we really do still need to uh, keep up with our taxonomies. LLMs are a great resource to look for new terminology in content that you have or suggest, you know, maybe different hierarchies. Uh, there's a lot of good uses of LLM and machine learning in the taxonomy space, 
but it absolutely doesn't replace a taxonomy and it certainly does not negate the need for a taxonomy. All right, so I hope that has been helpful to you. If you are in the situation where you're trying to work with stakeholders and they think that, you know, there's no need for a taxonomy anymore, or maybe you don't even have a taxonomy yet, but you're, you know, jumping full tilt into the machine learning space, just know taxonomies are incredibly important and they're gonna make your life a lot easier if you're getting into machine learning. So if you don't already have one, you might actually wanna show your stakeholders that finding training sets or being able to label the, the, the gaps in the coverage uh, for either machine learning by itself, um, you know, outside of just the LLM space, but also for the LLM space. That is something that you need a taxonomy for. It actually makes your job training the models and keeping the models maintained and up to date much easier. It also makes sure that your um, customer satisfaction or your user satisfaction is going to still remain higher because those taxonomy terms are the things that people are familiar with. It makes sense for your business. It makes sense for your content. And you can even use those taxonomies to train, not even talking about the content it's applied to, which is very common to use taxonomies to find training documents, but you could train your models on your taxonomy as well, especially if you have things like scope notes and definitions that are unique to your company. The other word of caution here is a lot of the off-the-shelf LLMs, you have to be very careful what you are feeding into them because if you um, are not careful and you don't have um, a license and, and make sure you look at that licensing agreement to make sure this is accurate, you want to make sure that you're not giving away uh, your IP to the LLMs that are off the shelf. Uh, you want to make sure that there are contractual things in place so that anything that you curate or anything that you feed into the model is yours and yours alone. So again, keeping in mind that LLMs can be used for um, helping you in the taxonomy space, just keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you have that covered. All right, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, this is the Wild West right now with the LLM space, but rest assured, Taxonomy is here to stay. It's even more important than it was before. It was already pretty important, but now it's even more important. And if you are working with stakeholders that don't realize that, maybe show them this video. Maybe take this video as inspiration and go and track down some data on your own. So with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.